I was in a refugee camp in uh, Palestinian Authority, and what all the crowd had to do was hear uh, from my interpreter that I was an American, and a gentleman jumps up and screams at me, a murderer, and another one jumps up, assassin, and another one calls child killer. Uh, within an hour, the guy that called me a murderer invites me to a Ramadan dinner at his house. I didn't hear what he thought of me. I connected to what he was feeling, what he was needing. As I walked into that refugee camp, there were hundreds of tear gas grenades all over the lawn, shot in the night before when they had a riot there. And on the side of the, each of the grenades was written, Made in USA. So when this guy calls me murderer, hearing that I'm an American, I tried to hear what is the guy feeling. I said, sir, are you furious? And then I tried to hear his needs. Are you needing a different kind of support from my country than you're getting? And he looks at me in a kind of a stunned way. Apparently that's not the way people respond to him usually when he screams at them. He said, you're damn right. We don't have sewage. We don't have housing. Why are you sending these weapons? So I said, well, then that makes it clear why you'd be so aggravated. If you don't have these basics and you get these weapons sent over here, I can see that you, your needs are for some other kind of support. He said, do you know what it's like to live under these conditions for all these years? I said, so you'd like me to understand just how desperate it can be even for one day, let alone for many years. So I, I heard what was alive in the guy. Not what he thought I was, a murderer. I didn't say, I ain't killed anybody. I tried to hear what was going on in him. And when he trusted that I sincerely cared what he was feeling, what he was needing, he could start to hear me then when I said, look, uh, I'm frustrated right now because I came a long way to be here. I want to offer something. And I'm worried now that because you got me labeled as an American, you ain't going to listen to me. He said, what do you want to say to us? So he, he could hear me then. And we incidentally, we have a school there now, one of the schools that we call a nonviolent communication school in that refugee camp. And uh, whenever I go to that region, I'm well received hospitably in that refugee camp. Uh, but I had to see the human being behind uh, the, the names that he was calling me. If they could get past the name calling, seeing the enemy images, just focus on what both sides were needing. Uh, you can get everybody's needs met. I'm sure most school children could solve the conflicts that lead to all these wars if you told them what both sides' needs were and what the resources were. It's not that we don't have the resources for meeting everybody's needs, but we've been educated to think in a way that turns people into enemies, that believes that some people deserve to suffer for what they're doing. And with that kind of thinking, judging people in that way, and with that system of justice, retributive justice, based on punishment and reward. That's where the violence comes from. 